Hello, hello everyone. How is everyone doing today? Thank you so much, you guys, for being here. I love when you guys show up for one of these messy shows. And today is probably going to be just as messy as our last live that we had. And guys, hopefully YouTube won't demonetize this live like they did with my hairy live that <laughs> they demonetized. <laughs> I, I kind of had a feeling that would happen since we were talking about essay and the topic and everything, but it was pretty fun. <laughs> it, it was a really fun live though. I really enjoyed that live. It was very informative. I, I showed you guys a lot of photos and videos of his creepy behavior. <laughs> Hi guys. How is everyone doing? How is everyone? I hope the weather is nice where you guys are. It's kind of cloudy and overcast and rainy where I am today. Like the temperature really dropped for some reason. Yesterday was nice and hot. Like I could get a tan yesterday. But then today it was just like it's been cold and gloomy. So I figured, you know what? Let's have a fun live today. And this is going to be fun and it's going to be messy. <laughs> I can't, Christine says, I can't believe they demonetized the nit pitching. You know what I think it was? Because I don't think it was exactly the videos and the photos that I was showing, but I think it was um, the words that I was using because YouTube doesn't like, they censor certain words that you're allowed to say on the platform. And the fact that we were talking about S-A and I kept saying the actual entire word as opposed to abbreviating it like most people do, it, yeah, it demonetized the video. But it was a good video. I suggest everyone go watch the live previous to this one. It's called Hansy Harry. It's hilarious. <laughs> Ginger, good to see you. And B, good to see you. It's good to see all the regulars here. Megan's mole. I had to step back this week from all things Trudeau. It was affecting my well-being. Well, all thoughts and prayers to all those in Canada. You all need to get rid of Trudeau there because he is messing up what is going on. Like, I don't know what is going on. It's It's gone pretty crazy up there. And you know what's funny is that I feel bad for the Canadians. I really do because you guys pay so much in taxes. And, well, it's the same with Americans too. We pay so much in taxes and you're watching your president or prime minister send all this money over to everywhere else except helping those people who reside in the country, like the Canadians or the Americans. You're not helping them. And, yeah, you're seeing, like, it's getting very restricted. Things are happening. It's kind of scary. I understand where you're coming from, Ginger. I get it. It's kind of overwhelming. And I feel like my eyes are more open to what's going on ever since I had a child. Because it's like you're always thinking about them. <clears throat> Hi, Duchess of Narsussex. Great to have you here. Everyone say hello to Duchess of Narsussex. Hey, girl. I'm glad you're loving this avatar. <laughs> I think this is this avatar. I got to give um, credit to Sue Smith. She sent it over to me via WhatsApp. And she was like, I saw this and I thought of you and I thought you might love it. And I've been using it since. And she was right. I don't know who actually made this originally. So the full credit goes out to them. But yeah, this has been my avatar. So I hope the person who made this doesn't mind me using it. I'd love to know who made it so I can shout them out and give them credit for it. Because this, <laughs> this is like the best avatar ever. <laughs> okay, guys. So I wanted to do this live because I think it's about time that I set the record straight about Princess Diana's gold Cartier French tank watch. The one that she loved. She had multiple watches. This one she wore also. And I feel like I did a video about this over like six months ago. And I think because I've had to remove a lot of my videos when my channel got demonetized, but I have it backed up onto Rumble for you guys. And I made a video. Yes. Oh, Sandy, thank you for saying this. Yes, Wally is back. She has been posting on X. She has been posting videos on X. She's been talking more on there. And yeah, I had posted um, a 
a post in my community tab on YouTube about it, but you're, you're right. Not many people see it. So I'm glad you mentioned it here, but yeah, you guys go and give her a follow and just say hello because yeah, she's, she's slowly coming back after a long, long hiatus. So back to the topic here. So six months ago, I made this video about Diana's watch because I myself personally, I can only speak about myself. I know others have said it's not the same watch and I have always said it is not the same watch. That is not Diana's watch. And I'm going to show you why I think it's not Diana's watch, but there's also a couple things that have happened in the media that is making me think like, okay, they are starting to now, um, change the narrative and put the truth out there. Martha, that's the story. See, I was going to come to that a little bit later, but that was the story. That story always came from Paul Burrell. And I, I hate to say it. I know the guy is going through his own cancer issues at the moment and his own treatment, but half his videos, I really side eye half the time. I kind of give him like the, uh, okay, sure. Because you hear so many variations of that story. And when I start, when I tell a story, if it's the correct story, if I'm telling you the right story, if it's the truth, my story is going to be the same uh, every single time I tell you that story. Paul Burrell's story has always changed. Stuff has been added to it. But we're going to go through this today. And I feel like um, the Daily Mail actually pointed it out too, which is why I want to bring this up because it seems like nobody is picking up on this. But in my opinion, I don't think Megan has any of Diana's jewelries because she's always been wearing replicas of them. If you watch this video that I have posted on Rumble, those alleged butterfly earrings that Meghan Markle was wearing were supposedly Diana's, but then it came to show that, oh, no, they were just replicas. They were just closely made ones. And no, they weren't her earrings. So I suggest um, I put a link to this Rumble video down below if you guys want to check it out because obviously it's not on YouTube anymore because I had to take off all those things. And yeah, girl, we're going to get into this also because that was a fakey too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry. That was honestly when people usually ask me like, okay, why do you not like Meghan Markle? Like, what's your issue with her? Like, are you a racist? And I'm like, no, I'm not racist. It's her character that I don't like. It's her behavior. It's the fact that from her engagement interview with Harry, the red flags were going up for me. And I knew this girl was like full of it. I mean, anyone who saw the engagement interview, if you saw the way this grown, nearly 40-year-old woman at the time was behaving, you'd be like, what the hell? Like, you could tell this girl is in it for the titles, for the money. If anyone said, oh, she actually loved him, I don't believe Meghan Markle ever loved Harry. Let's be honest. I believe she loved the idea of what Harry could do for her since she was written out of suits. I know Meghan likes to change the narrative and claim that she left suits because the royal family got involved and they were looking over her scripts. And no, nothing like that happened. Meghan was already written out of suits. So just saying, just trying to keep it factual because I know how the story goes changes and it always gets changed around. It always gets exaggerated. So the old timers like myself who have been paying attention to this whole Meghan Markle debacle from the day she basically got her claws into the ginger dimwit, we got to keep reminding people what the real story was. And this is why sometimes I like to upload videos about previous past stories because I feel like I need to remind everyone, okay, this is what happened in the past. This is what's happening again. This is her character. This is what she does. This isn't something new. So when it comes to Princess Diana's gold watch, I feel like 
I've always said it's a fake watch. It's not Diana's actual gold watch. And Meghan Markle's never come out. She's obviously not going to come out and say, no, it's not. I'm going to correct that because she wants people to think, oh, she has a piece of Diana's jewelry, just like how Catherine has her ring. Yeah. I don't, I don't believe Megan has any of Diana's jewelry. And the reason why I say this is because this watch didn't even appear. A lot of people say, look, Harry gave Megan the watch. I know there was a comment earlier that I had replied to, and someone had said Harry had given Megan the watch after they got married. Well, no, that's not. That's not exactly true, is it? Because right after Harry and Meghan got married, when she was pregnant, I guess you would see the watch on her hand. But we never saw any watches or anything on, nope, no watch, no watch at all, okay? And that's when she was pretending to be pregnant with Archificial here, okay? So that's that one. She didn't have the gold watch then. And if she had Diana's watch, if Harry had given Diana's watch, you Megan would be front and center in all the papers constantly. Look, look, I have, I have Diana's watch. I have Diana's watch. I have Diana's watch. It would be all, all about Diana's watch. It would be never ending stories about it. You wouldn't hear the end of it. She would constantly go on. And then there was when she when she was on her maternity leave, allegedly. She decided to come back early and surprise, um, do a surprise appearance at some baseball game here and show up. And yeah, no watch here, nothing. No, just a simple bracelet, but no watch. Nothing at all. And I don't know if she was wearing like a fake bump or what she was doing here to make it look like she was still postpartum. I don't know what's going on with her dress here, but we see no watch. So there was no watch. <laughs> um, Angelique says, I didn't know if it was okay to name your child. Oh, Angelique, I'm not like the other creators who make a big fuss about other creators being named in their channels. I know exactly who you're talking about because I have blocked them also after they called me a crackpot. Yes. So um, I am, I'm not that type of creator who makes a big fuss about other creators being named in the comment section of my channel. I actually, I, 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 what am I trying to say? I I am open to it. No, I actually, I, I let people name other people's channel name because that's how I find other channels also. That's how I come across them also. So no, share away, share as much as you like. Uh, Penny Lane, it wasn't Trevor's bracelet because that bracelet that she wore looked like a little beaded thing and Trevor's was that dingy Cartier love bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, yeah, you got a point here. She says it's better to be a crackpot than a crackhead. <laughs> I agree completely. I agree. I share. I share completely. I share. I, I think sharing is caring. I'm all about name other creators, but don't be rude. Like if you're naming a creator just to drag them in my comments, don't do that. But if you are being like, oh, hey, Megan's Mole, check out this creator and this video and what they're saying in it. I will definitely, when I have the time, check it out. But I'm not like, oh, don't mention that creator. Don't mention, and I will block you and strike you from my channel. No, I won't do anything like that. I ain't that petty. Trust me. <laughs> Even with the sugars, I let the squatties come in here and name things. As long as it's not racist or dragging anyone else, I'm totally cool with it. It's fine. So back to this topic. So what had happened is that a lot of people tend to confuse. Let's start at the very beginning. Because people tend to confuse that the gold watch is the same as the one that Megan bought for herself in 2015. And it's not. So in 2015, when Suits was renewed for a third season, 
Meghan Markle sat down with Hello Magazine at the time. Hello Magazine, which is her favorite that she still reaches out to, or as HG and Duchess of North Sussex would say, hello. <laughs> I don't do it as good as they do. But Meghan had bought herself um, a Cartier watch. And what had happened is that she bought herself this two-toned Cartier watch. And in this, um, let me see if there's a, here's the photo. Here it is. So it's a two-tone. It's a silver and gold one. And what she said in this interview with Hello Magazine is that she had the back of it engraved. She had the back of it engraved, which said 2MM from MM. And her story to Hello Magazine was, I plan to pass it on to my daughter one day. Well, if you were going to pass it along to a daughter you were going to have one day, I'm sure you would not have it engraved 2MM from MM. I mean, unless if you were planning on naming your daughter Meghan Markle and you called yourself Rachel Meghan Markle, I don't know. But yeah, Rachel, totally. It's a complete narc move to me from me. It's like she might as well have written on the back, I love me. <laughs> I wonder if she put it in a box and had it had the um, business send it over to her house also. So she could be like, oh, a surprise? Who bought this for me? <laughs> Oh, God. I know she has a daughter, isn't M.M. Mimi Beth? <laughs> Mimi Beth. I call her Invisibet. <laughs> but really, like, this, this was, Megan's been stalking Diana for a long time. Let's be honest. This is just all that this article showed to me, is that way before 2015, despite Meghan Markle claiming not knowing anything about the royal family, she was stalking Diana by going to Northwestern, by having the same type of watch she had. It's almost like she was bringing into fruition what she wanted to happen. I mean, I, I'm not a big fan of this watch myself. Uh, I wouldn't wear it, but yeah. So this is the watch Meghan Markle had originally bought for herself. And this was in 2015. This is the two-tone one. So I want people to get it straight when they say, no, Meghan has always had this watch. This gold one that she is now wearing, claiming to be the Princess Diana watch, I don't believe it is the princess, Princess Diana's actual watch. I think it's one that she's bought for herself and she's just conveniently allowed the narrative of, oh, it's Princess Diana's watch to just be spread far and wide everywhere. That's what I believe. Civil defense, thank you, my dear. Molly, have a cup of tea on me. And guys, chat, please thumbs up the stream. Thank you, my dear. So kind of you. I will definitely have a coffee after this live because I have a long day. So thank you. I appreciate you. So getting back to this. So Megan bought this watch for herself back in 2015 when Suits was um, was renewed for the third season. She said, I had it engraved on the back, 2MM from MM, and I plan to give it to my daughter one day. That's what makes pieces special, the connection you have to them. I thought what makes pieces special is the history and the story behind them. I didn't know engraving a watch meant, I don't know, she's, I mean, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. Like it makes my head hurt. It's so dumb. She always has to have some kind of stupid story that goes along. It just can't be very basic. Like, yeah, I saw the watch. We got renewed for a third season. So I decided to go just buy myself the watch and give it to myself, engrave it to myself from myself. That's it. I love me, 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 me. Exactly. But no, she always has to have some kind of stupid be story that probably didn't even happen behind it. It's just, I don't know. I, I don't like engraving before their existence. Yeah, it's kind of creepy, right? But I'm not a fan of engraving either. I always feel like when you engrave jewelry, I mean, if it's a nice piece of jewelry, you're kind of ruining the value of it. And if you are going to sell it, I mean, 
Who's going to buy a personalized engraved piece of jewelry? Not me, that's for sure. That's going to be weird, right? Buy someone's jewelry and it says to MM from MM and then you got, I mean, I guess you could get it buffed off. But anyways, I just find it tacky to engrave jewelry. That's just me. <laughs> but let me keep going here. So Megan bought that watch for herself. Are we clear on that? I think we're all clear on this one here. And then Marie Claire had um, published an article about the watch. Oh, let me, hold on. Now, before I get to that, let me go here first. Sorry, guys. Um, so this watch, I'm going to show you guys when this watch first made an appearance and why I believe that she bought it for herself. So people say, okay, this watch, Megan got, got it after they got married to Harry. I don't believe that because if Megan got the watch right away, she would have been wearing it right away and it would have been talked about nonstop. So I'm going to pinpoint around when I think Megan got the watch here. And I think I might be right here. So on September, I think it was, it was September 2020. So we were in the height of lockdown at the time. And I feel like Harry and Megan got paid out for some of whatever the heck that they did with Oprah and the shit show there. Um, Megan showed up on to do on America's Got Talent. You guys remember that? She showed up there on Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020 to wish a contestant named Archie Williams good luck and to let him know that she's a fan. And not only because he's got the same name as baby Archie, but then, I don't know, she just, I don't, it was so dumb. I don't remember what the rest was. But she showed up wearing this brown outfit and these leather pants or faux leather pants. And this was their stage set up Montecito Olive Garden looking casa that they live or don't live at. Who the heck knows? But if let me see if I can make this uh, photo bigger. But if you can see, let me doo -doo -doo, open image in a new tab. Okay, stop sharing. Look, guys, I'm getting a little bit better at handling this live stream stuff. Okay, so here is, here's the photo. And there is no gold watch. There is Trevor's bracelet, the gold Cartier bracelet. And there's another gold bracelet there, which she was wearing. And I think it was named in the article because, you know, in every single thing that Meghan Markle does, it has to name every single thing that she's wearing. So the gold jewelry was a chunky plated um, bracelet. It was a Monica Vin, Vin, Vinander, Vinander bracelet. Um, pardon me, I'm butchering, butchering the last name. But we got the name of the bracelet in the article. And yes, guys, she's in beige again. And you notice, yes, she has aged from 2020 to now. Yikes. It just shows that living a toxic life shows on the outside. Being a toxic person while pretending to be a compassionate humanitarian always shows up on your face. It always shows up on your skin. I, that was, Tessa Kate, that was one big point that I made in my previous video is who wears their ex's jewelry in a new marriage? Yes. I mean, I mentioned in my video that I had done about this, that's posted on Rumble, um, that if I married a prince like Prince Harry, forget me wearing the raggedy gold Cartier bracelet my ex-husband gave me. I'm going to be wearing like a new updated Cartier bracelet, maybe one with diamonds instead in it. You know, you get ones with uh, six diamonds. Wear something like get an update. If you love the same bracelet, that's fine. Just get an up, an upgraded one. You, you're with a prince now. But I feel like she wears it because, number one, ooh, it's a luxury brand name like Cartier. And also it's a way to keep Harry in check, too. Well, doesn't Harry still wear his necklace from Chelsea? 
I mean, Megan wears her bracelet from Trevor. He wears his necklace from Chelsea. <laughs> Blake, uh, Duchess of Narcissus says she's still narc hovering Trevor. Yeah, I feel like she does this to keep it in his face in a way too. Like, ooh, I still have a connection to my ex. But I feel like these two are both screwed in the head. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, a lot of people are saying that's what Ozempic is doing. You know what, guys? I have a couple friends who are on Ozempic. And I haven't seen the type of um side effects that they are having like they look great but their their face and their skin look nothing like the way Megan's look and this is just my opinion but I feel like there's more not just Ozempic there might be a little you know skiing with her nose maybe allegedly or some some smoking, some ganja with Doria. I don't know. I don't know. But I feel like it's not just the Ozempic because I see people on Ozempic and I've never seen um, anyone go down the downhill as Meghan Markle has. And yes, Trevor did dodge a bullet. He dodged a huge bullet and he upgraded. Have you noticed how all of Meghan Markle's exes have upgraded in one way or another? <laughs> Bauro says, thank you, my dear. They say, towards the little man's college fund, thanks for all the work you've put into the dossier. Someone should really call CPS on them as well for a welfare check. Now, you know why I think no one's ever called CPS on them? Because, well, what's the point when there's no children around them? Who, I mean, who is CPS going to go search and check up on? Thank you again, dear. That was very kind of you. Thank you. I And really, CPS is, yeah, Zephyr said it here. They're kind of worthless in California. I mean, Trevor really upgraded. Trevor got a woman who's worth over $300 million, and he has two beautiful, very real children of his own. CPS wouldn't go to a place that if there's no children there, let's be honest. <laughs> So I showed you guys just now that, um, let's get back to the story because I'm getting off track here. <laughs> um, so I showed you guys that Megan was at the America's Got Talent on September 23rd, I said, right? 2020. Well, then Megan, let me remind you that um, Megan showed up to another talk. A couple days after that, it was the Fortune's Most Powerful Women Virtual Summit. And she showed up there. Let me, uh-oh, did I accidentally just close it? Oopsies. Oopsies. Let me. So I think it was, it was here. This was the first, this summit that she went and she got pissed off at the lady that was asking her questions because um, the lady basically said to her, like, you aren't the most popular or famous. And I don't know, she didn't like, she didn't like how the lady critiqued her. But um, the first time the watch made its appearance, sorry for the scrolling, was during this live that she appeared at, and I will show you. Here we go, here's the picture that I have. Because you know Megan, she always has to put her hands up somehow and show off her finery that's been gotten by marrying into the royal family. But right here, there you go. That's the watch right there, that's the gold watch. And that's when it had made its first appearance at this Zoom call, and that, was on what date? I will give you September 29th. So just a couple days afterwards. So I feel like Megan must have either ordered it and her shipment came in or she got paid for something and went down and bought it for herself and needed something to connect her to Diana. And this was it. Because this watch, when you look more closely at it, you will see that it is not the exact same watch as Diana's because Diana's watch, the links are completely different. The face of the watch is a little bit longer, whereas Megan's watch, it's a little bit shorter and a little bit fatter, and the, the links of the watch are actually different. So, I mean, I just... 
I just get so tired of seeing people say this, that, oh, it's Diana's watch. But then if you guys, I know some people will say, well, this isn't proof. This is nothing. This doesn't prove anything. I'll show you. I'll show you right here because um, there has been a couple retractions that have been made. And once that starts happening, I believe, okay, I must have been right. I must have been completely right about what I was thinking because not too long after that, I had mentioned the Marie Claire, um, what was it, article. And I got to throw a huge, um, a huge thank you to Remy on X. And they gave me this screenshot to use in that video. So I got to pull it up from there again. I swear, Remy, not only are the, is she great for, not only are they great for their fashion and everything that they put out on X, but also they are like a super sleuth. <laughs> I call her the vault. Anything that I need, any screenshots that I need, I'm like, I go to her and she has it. It's awesome. But Marie Claire wrote an article and this was May 9th, 2021. Okay, my friends. And in this article, they wrote that the Cartier Tank Francaise watch was one of Diana's favorite pieces, and she frequent and she wore it frequently to royal engagements in the 90s. And then it says here, and then earlier it said Meghan Markle wore a Cartier watch that belonged once belonged similar to one beloved by her late mother-in-law, Princess Diana. They had to update that because earlier in this article, they had stated an earlier version of this story incorrectly stated that Meghan Markle was wearing the specific watch that had belonged to Princess Diana. We regret this error. So they went back and they had to fix it. And they put in that Meghan Markle wore a Cartier watch similar to the one beloved by her late mother-in-law, Princess Diana. Okay, so this was the edited version. This was the edited version. So this was one clue. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Paula. Good to see you in here. <laughs> uh, so this was one clue to me that, okay, I was right. Meghan Markle does not have Princess Diana's watch. She doesn't. That was one clue for me. And then most recently, the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail published um, an article. And I don't know if a lot of people caught on to it because they were talking about some other bracelet that Meghan was wearing. And this is how it starts. Is Meghan's favorite new accessory a Valentine's gift from Harry? Duchess of Sussex has worn a $5,500 diamond tennis bracelet seven times in six weeks. Okay, that's great. So it's like we're supposed to believe Harry went and picked out this bracelet and she wore this to the outing that I don't believe, guys, I'm going to say this. I don't believe... Um, uh, where is, hold on a second. I just saw something here. Um, Megan's mold. Do you know she had it engraved? Hers is yes. Recollections may vary. We went over that, um, earlier in the video here earlier in the live, I went over her first watch, which was the two tone silver and gold one. And that she had that engraved and that was in 2015. And yes, Diana's was an 18 karat gold, which Megan is now wearing and claims that it is Diana's, but yes, I'm showing that it's not actually Diana's watch and that it is one that Megan probably bought for herself. But yeah, you just got to go to the very beginning. Sorry, guys. Um, now, Daily Mail. OK, I was talking about this picture. Sorry, friends. I don't believe this was recent, as Megan likes to claim it was. I think this photo was done at the same time as that other black and white Photoshop fakery that was taken in front of Frogmore Cottage. We were supposed to believe that was done by Misan Harriman. I think this, whatever photo that was taken, that this was done at the same time. I wouldn't even be surprised if Misan was there taking these photos, but we just didn't see him in the background because he kept himself well hidden this time. 
I believe this photo is old because everyone was still wearing their masks. And had you noticed, they were all socially distanced. Go into a hospital now and the children's ward is not like that. They're not socially distanced like this. But um, I think so, Arsal. I think Paula... I think she made a video this where she called and they confirmed. I'm not too sure, but you'd have to check with her. I think she's in the chat here. Oh, right here. She says, I called the hospital and they had no clue of this alleged March 21st, 2024 photo. Yeah. Yeah, I 100% believe these photos were taken the same time whenever Misan took those other photos. I don't believe it, but... <clears throat> um. Let me continue here. So within this article, guys, let me take that comment down so you can see this. So within this article, if you pass all the nonsense about this ugly bracelet, like it's not even that nice. I wouldn't even spend $5,500 on this bracelet, but Megan is completely new money. I bet you if I wrapped a steamy hot turd in gold foil and gave it some kind of exotical name, I could probably sell it to her for like $10,000. <laughs> Cause she is that new money. She is so new money and it's just like, I'm just, but this is um, within this article that was just published not too long ago. I think it was just two days ago. If you read through it, it says here, um, she often stacks the standout piece on top of her other bling, such as her beloved Cartier watch, identical to the one her mother-in-law, Princess Diana, owned. So the press is no longer playing her game. They're no longer playing her game into, oh yeah, she's wearing Princess Diana's gold watch. She's wearing Princess Diana's gold watch. No, I don't believe it. It's just like how we were supposed to believe that Meghan Markle was getting the emerald from Diana's emerald necklace made into an uh, engagement ring, remember? <laughs> and then we saw Catherine, let me just put it up here. And then we saw Catherine show up like, I swear, my this was iconic. This was iconic because we all heard about how like, oh, Megan was going to get this green emerald set into a ring for her. She was going to get the emerald. And this is what she wanted. She, Megan Markle really thought that she was going to get this emerald as her engagement ring. Baby, when I saw Catherine show up to Earthshot with this emerald with the, the, the same cost, which is the same cost as their Montecito mansion around her neck, I, I fell out of my seat. I was like, damn girl, this, this, Megan's going to lose her ish. Megan's going to lose it. <laughs> But yeah, Megan really thought that she was going to get this. This was the narrative that she was going to get this emerald and it was going to be set into the ring for her. And that was going to be hers. Like, get lost. So when I saw Catherine show up and rock this, I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. And it looks great on Catherine. It sure does. She makes... Catherine makes everything look elegant, whereas you got Megan and she just wears it in the worst way ever. Yes, it would be a huge ring. And that's what Megan wanted. That's what Megan always wanted. She's always wanted that huge ring. Remember during the engagement interview, when they were asking her about the engagement ring, she was like, oh, hmm, it was nice. Oh, Lady Aviator, that's so kind of you. I hope you have a safe flight. I hate that I will miss the rest of the live boarding an international flight. Keep up the good work, Molly. Love your commentary. You're hysterical. Well, I hope you have a safe flight, Lady Aviator, and I hope you have a safe trip wherever you're going. And thanks for tuning in and enjoy your flight, my dear. Uh, you can catch the rest on the replay later, too. <laughs> so that you don't miss anything. <laughs> um, remember, Megan wanted the tiara apparently that Eugenie was wearing, right? 
She won. I personally, I thought, I didn't know it was the one that Eugenie was wearing. Hold on. I thought it was, um, hold on. Let me, let me pull it up. I thought the, the, okay. I always thought that Meghan Markle wanted this, like she thought she was entitled to this, um, I thought she wanted this crown for her wedding, the Vladimir tiara with the emeralds on it instead of the diamonds. I I honestly, my when I heard that there was a fight, I honestly thought she wanted to wear this tiara with the emeralds put in. That's what I thought. And then the story was changed to, oh, she wanted the one that Eugenie was wearing. Yes, Megan was so disappointed in her in her engagement ring. You could tell she hated that thing. The girl honestly thought she was probably going to get some kind of Beyonce style 13 carat massive blinged out rock. She honestly probably thought that. Which is why she covets, she covets the actual sapphire ring. I I thought that Paula is saying Megan wanted the tiara you were showing. You think so? Because I always thought this is the tiara that she wanted. That she wanted this one. You guys know that this tiara, you can take out the emeralds and you can wear it on its own without the emeralds. Or you can put um, diamonds instead. Or you can put pearls also, I think it was. You could put pearls too. Let me take a look. Yeah, the queen has worn it three separate. Let me show you here. Three different ways. Uh, let me pull up the image here. Oh, I love, I, you guys, I miss the queen so much. Whenever I see photos of the queen, I just, I feel like the monarchy has gone to absolute disrepair since she's been gone. But you see here, the Vladimir Tiara with the pearl attachment here. Oh, doesn't she look so beautiful? Look at that. So beautiful. But that was with the emeralds. And then this was, I mean, that was with the pearls, with the pearls. Look at all this jewelry. I love, this is with, um, what was here? Specialized in, I'm not sure. I think that was with emeralds there. And then here you can see it with the pearls, with the emeralds, and then just plain. And I know there's one with, I think there is the diamond attachment, but so beautiful, isn't it? I think that... Meghan Markle wanted that one. I think she honestly thought that she was entitled to having the grand Vladimir tiara with the pearls, but she didn't get that. And yes, she had her engagement ring redone right afterwards. Like, well, not even two years. She had it redone to look just like the engagement ring that Trevor had given her. It was the queen's grandest tiara. That tiara is gorgeous. I think between that and there are a couple of other ones that I really like. But yeah, that tiara was any tiara that you can like add pieces to it and switch out the gems. I love that. Or any of those um, tiaras that convert into necklaces. I've seen those. Oh my goodness. Those are gorgeous. Now, I will always believe that the tiara Meghan Markle wore on her wedding day was a replica. That's just my opinion. That I've always believed that with her shenanigans and everything, that that tiara that they gave her was not the actual tiara. And it was a high quality replica that she had made, like a Swarovski replica that she had made. That's what I, that's just my beliefs. But yeah, Elophilia, you said here, wasn't MM wearing a fake tiara anyways? I'm sure I saw some rainbow sparkles showing there from the Mosinite. See, I thought it was like the high quality cubic zirconias because you see like the actual Swarovski cubic zirconia diamonds, faux diamonds, they shine and glitter the same way. They rainbow sparkle the same way. And I thought they were it. But then when you look at, when you look at really good high quality diamonds, the light that reflects refracts from the sun is white. Some people don't get, when you look at high quality diamonds, when the sun hits off the diamond, the 
the sparkle should be white if it's a good quality diamond, but not on, not on um, Meghan Markle's tiara. It was rainbow sparkles all the way. And I thought it was maybe just a really good quality, high quality replica made. And let me show you another one. So there were, there has been, the narrative has been getting changed now that it's not Princess Diana's watch. And those are because that watch never showed up until later. And I showed you guys, I'll even show you here. When Harry and Meghan, remember, she made her very first um, appearance in the hair, wearing the hair of what does Lady C like to say? Wearing the hair of a thousand Turkish virgins on her head. <laughs> I mean, look. <laughs> What are those dogs with the really long hair that look really shaggy? Like <laughs> it reminds me of those poodles, like those really <laughs> anyways. But when she was doing these zooms from, I don't know, I, we're supposed to guess this is uh, Tyler Perry's mansion, but you can even see, and let me zoom in into this photo. Oh, she looks like she's highly out of it. She is not even wearing that watch at the time. And that was 2020 also. Let me see exactly when that um, summit, when she was at that summit. Let me take a look. Oh, 2020 Leadership Summit. So it was earlier in 2020 and she didn't have it. So Meghan Markle, I don't believe that that watch showed up on her wrist until between September, what was it? September 23rd, 2020 and September 29th when she showed up on that Zoom. And then the whole narrative started that, oh, it's Princess Diana's watch. I don't believe it. And now we've seen retractions twice now, twice. Once from Marie Claire. And now the Daily Mail is saying themselves that it is a watch identical to the one Princess Diana owned. So I feel like I just wanted to come on here and do this live because I had made a video about it before. But the thing is, is that since my channel had gotten demonetized and I had to remove a lot of videos, a lot of people don't go on to Rumble. So they won't see what I have posted there. And guys, there are a lot of my past videos that you guys should check out on Rumble. Everything is there from my very first crappy ASMR sounding breathy video to like now where I'm just super chill with you guys because I've gotten relaxed in my own skin and doing these now. But I feel like I had to bring this up again. Um, I wanted to also mention, and I don't know, <laughs> Mama Tree says the hair of a thousand whores, not virgins. <laughs> Darling, if they were whores, then the hair would be all raggedy, wouldn't it? Because it'd be all sweaty from being used. <laughs> oh dear, I can't believe I just went there. That's so gross. <laughs> but you guys, I'm just saying, I feel like, I feel like I caught on to Meghan Markle's shenanigans early because this raggedy trollop wanted to push the narrative that she was close or Diana 2.0. Um, recollections may vary. I think the link is in the description box of this YouTube video here. Let me just check if I put it in there. Yeah. If you go in the description box and you, I put little um, pins and it says sources and it is the second link. It goes to my rumble account and it's there. You can, is it, it's in the description box there. Um, and you can check it out. All of my old videos are there that you can check out, but I feel like I've always caught on to this raggedy trollop from the very beginning because Meghan Markle started pulling these kinds of stunts from her, the day that her and Harry got married. I mean, there's, there's this. I should just, um, I think, what do you guys think? Should I do a video, like a standalone video on the aquamarine divorce ring that Diana wore? Because um, 
the reason why I say this is because you guys remember during um, her wedding, during her wedding, let me take a look here. Remember, it was all, oh, Meghan Markle is wearing Diana's aquamarine divorce ring. That's her something blue. That's her something blue. And then later on, Megan did an interview where she claimed that she stitched some blue thread into her wedding dress, and that was her something new. But my thing, I have always been shouting from the rooftops that this ring is not the same ring that Diana was wearing. It is not Diana's aquamarine divorce ring. And I feel like, uh oh. I closed it. Let me open it. Oopsies. And I feel like I should either make a standalone video, but I'm going to share with you guys here. And just look at Diana's ring here. Let me zoom in a bit more. Diana's ring, when you look at it, it's more, um, it's more of an emerald elongated cut. Okay. Girls, if any girls love their diamonds, if they love their rocks, you can tell the difference between a cushion cut, which is more of a square with rounded corners. And this is more rectangular. It's long. It's elongated. And totally different colors, totally different colors. The one that Meghan Markle was wearing is a totally different color. Even the side stones are totally different. But I feel like I should do a whole deep dive on this. Yeah, you guys say yes, yes. See, this is this is my problem. And this was back in the day when Harry and Meghan got married. I remember distinctively with my own two eyeballs seeing an article that mentioned this was the ring that Meghan Markle was wearing was an absolute replica, which can be bought on QVC for XYZ or the shopping network, something like that. At the time when Harry and Meghan were getting married, I didn't think, hey, maybe I should screenshot this article and maybe I should save it. I wasn't thinking that because, well, I wasn't really paying that much attention to it. I was like, oh, but I remember reading it. And then I remember going back to find that article and it was completely gone. And ever since that day, I learned my lesson to screenshot everything. <laughs> After that day when I did not, I learned my lesson to screenshot and save or archive an article right away just so you have the original because we now know that Harry and Meghan do get whoever is writing articles for them to update the articles and they never put in like notes saying that the article has been updated to reflect changes or anything like that. I I learned at that point. And for those of you guys who don't know how to how to archive an article, it is very easy very easy. You can archive articles that um, basically have paywalls too. So, you know, like Telegraph? Um, no, dear, they had this before. No, because Diana, okay, gay, gay, gay Santis. Um, Diana wore this ring after she got divorced and they were selling replicas of this ring after Diana wore it. So they've been selling replicas of this ring for a very long time. Not And QVC or the Shopping Network, one of those shopping places, they've been selling these rings for a very long time. Trust me. <laughs> so it's not, I don't, it's not something new. I'm just saying, but it's not. And when I saw this, this is what really got my back up too. I mean, my red flags and my radars were already going off with the whole engagement interview. But then everything that we read up to it was that, was this just like blew my mind. This made me realize, look, this chick thinks that she's Diana, but she's not. And the sad thing is, is that when you really look at Meghan Markle, she has no personality of her own. She is basically a Timu knockoff of everyone that she wants to copy all rolled into one. 
She has no personality of her own. One day she wants to be like Angelina. One day she wants to dress like Princess Catherine. She thinks she's Diana 2.0. We call that mental illness, my friends. <laughs> Kim says you can get a bloody blue topaz at Costco. Yeah, you can get one anywhere. You can. I'm sure they have this topaz ring at Costco for like $300. <laughs> Amazon, you name it. There are a lot of uh, sellers on Etsy, on Etsy that sell replica jewelry like this. You know how many, um, if you are willing to spend the money, you can get a damn near identical looking crown like tiara made to like the one that the royals actually wore if you're willing to spend the money. Like I've seen some tiaras that are on sale there for nearly $2,000. It's crazy. Claire's in the mall for 15. Claire's used to be my jam when I was younger. Okay. I loved Claire's when I was younger. It was like the first place. It was the only place you could find me when I was in the mall. First and only. I would never leave that store. Etsy does sell some for $40. They sell some for cheap, but like I said, you can get some good quality ones if you want to spend the money. I mean, the other day I saw, what was it? A beautiful blue topaz. It was um, a pair. I love looking at like stones, loose stones just for fun, but I saw a beautiful blue topaz. Um, I think it was about 12 carats. It was big. I think it was more than 12 carats and it was on the Blue Nile website. But the price tag was like the tag of a Ferrari. It was crazy. But damn, that thing was gorgeous. It was the most beautiful blue topaz I have ever seen in my life. But holy cow, I could not imagine if spending that kind of money, even if I was rich, I don't know. I could not imagine spending the price of a car like a Ferrari on, I don't know, a gem. I, I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. But you guys, I honestly <laughs> loving Claire's. Look, I love Claire's. Claire's was where I went to get my ears pierced too. I think every girl has done that. I mean, every girl in my age range back in the day when we were like 13, go to Claire's. They use that ear piercing gun. Click, click. <laughs> Blue Nile is crazy. Yeah, Blue Nile is crazy expensive, but you know, a girl likes to dream, right? Yes, they are overpriced. I, I believe it. Yeah, they are overpriced, but I just like going and just looking at all the different kinds of stones that they have. And then I usually go and look at other places. But yeah, Blue Nile is pricey and it's overpriced, but I do love looking at all the different gems that they have. I, I know. I love, I love, especially, um, I love the actual like jewelry and stuff from the Middle East, you know, like, um, like Italy or Europe or the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia, like the jewelry and the designs just compared to like the Northern market. It doesn't do it for me. Once you go overseas and you see how, the gemologists and the artists are just making jewelry there. It blows your mind away. And then when you come back to North America, you're just like, huh, it's not so fun. <laughs> it's not so fun. <laughs> Jennifer says, um, I got all three of my daughter's ears pierced at Claire's too. See, Claire's is the jam, guys. Claire's is the best. I love Claire's. My favorite thing back in the day when I was way younger, I used to love, I had an obsession with sparkle glitter and I would buy like sparkle glitter to like wear as eyeshadow and to put it on my face and everything. Like God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Greece and the UAE have gorgeous jewelry. Yeah. I love anything from overseas. Like take me there and let me, yeah. I love trying on. Yeah. If I'm in a secure room with like a vault or something, like just leave me there and just let me see. This is what I could never understand about Meghan Markle is that you had a chance and hey, Fumble Bunny, thank you for becoming a member. That's so kind of you. So awesome. <laughs> you can use all the cool um, emoticons that I have of Meghan's feet. <laughs> but you guys, um, 
what was I saying? I totally went off track here. <laughs> You should look at Glitter Gate. But, oh, this is what I was going to say. What I couldn't understand about Meghan Markle, maybe I could. If I was in her position, like the fact that she got to live within these palaces that are so full of history. Like I see that um, the new wing of Buckingham Palace is being opened so people can come and look around and stuff like that. And I'm just like, I do like the virtual tours that you do online and you can look on your computer and do like the virtual 3D tours. And I love, I just sit on my computer for hours and just stare at like the paintings and the stuff that I see there. And it's because like, there's so much history. How, like, I would just, like, I would just be walking down the hallways, just staring at the walls, like wanting to know every single thing about the history of that painting, that artwork, that where this came from. Like, there is so much to learn. She just threw it all away for... I don't know. For what? For what? Threw it all away to what? To go back and become a celebrity? I mean, who cares about celebrities? Honestly, who cares? She really just wants to be one of those. I always said it. Megan has always wanted to be that girl who was chased down the street like Diana and like Catherine. And when that didn't happen, then, oh, the UK became a racist country and everyone hates her and the media is so mean, blah, blah, blah. I always think that Megan thought that she was going to get chased down the street like the same way that Catherine and Diana were. And because she didn't, then, then the UK sucks. That's why she's gone over now to the US and she has to pay back grid to follow her, her around in a parking lot. But I feel like this live needed to be done. Hello, Mama T Sussex. Welcome and welcome for becoming a new member. I hope you enjoy the new um, emoticons you have access to. I should be making more later tonight. <laughs> Maybe some uh, dropping moon bump emoticons. Who knows? I'll get on work on that tonight later. But guys, this is like, I, I wanted to do this live. I know we're at an hour now, but I wanted to do this live and jump on here and show you guys like, look, the ring, the watch that Meghan Markle has does not belong to Princess Diana. The gold Cartier watch is not hers. And I think now I will definitely do a video on the blue aquamarine ring also. But rest assured, as much as Meghan Markle wants to claim that the watch that she is wearing used to belong to Princess Diana, don't believe it. Don't believe it for one minute. Don't believe it at all. It's not the same watch at all. And I feel like in this video, I have given you more than enough proof to show you that it is not something from Diana and that it's something that she most likely purchased. I feel like, um, <clears throat> what is this? need to find more screen grabs of Diana's aqua. Yeah, I will. I'll make a video because I have lots of photos of that. I have and Diana's aquamarine ring does look different. Like it looks different. It shines differently in different lighting. Of course, you know, since you're a professional. But I feel like, yeah, it's not the same ring. And we just need to keep going at the fact that, look, if Meghan Markle wore fake butterfly earrings and claimed that they were Diana's only to later be debunked that they weren't Diana's, this girl has a history of lying. She lies about everything. She's pathological. Why wouldn't she lie about this? <laughs> Sonia was puff. Maybe I should. Yeah, that's a good idea. I should put a tiara on my picture. Maybe I'll put the one that she coveted for her wedding, but never got. <laughs> um, Diana's ring is aquamarine because Diana's divorce ring was an aquamarine ring. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. See, the thing that I've always heard is that Megan and Diane, I mean, Megan Markle left the royal family with no jewelry of Diana's in her possession. I always heard the rumblings that William made sure 
that Megan had none of his mother's jewelry in her possession. That's and he's right for doing that. I wouldn't want any of my mother's jewelry in her raggedy hands either. Gross. Could you like just imagine she would have sold it off for yeah, she would have definitely sold it off by now. And I never really believed Paul Burrell's story about this whole thing because this was always nobody has ever this has always just been Paul Burrell's story. Paul Burrell told the story that it was 15-year-old William who chose the watch first and Harry wanted his mother's ring. But then Burrell claimed that Harry said that he wanted his mummy's ring because when he was a small boy, that ring always hurt him because it was so big. And then later, Harry swapped the ring with um, William. I never believed this story because how would you know Paul Burrell? How do you know this had all happened? You weren't around Harry and William when they swapped or if William even picked up. I never believed this story. I never believed it. I never believed that's how it actually happened. I've always believed that that ring was destined for William to give to his bride. I don't believe that there was this whole swapping and everything as Paul Burrell tells it. I don't believe it at all one bit. Not at all. But anyways, guys, I got to get going here. I got to run some errands before it gets too late. And I hope you guys enjoyed this live. And let's hope that YouTube doesn't demonetize this one like they did with my handsy Harry one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's hilarious. Look at this. Kim Lloyd George says Duchess of Windsor managed to get a 32 carat emerald out of Edward, allegedly one of Queen Alexandria's famous emeralds given to them at the Delhi Durbar in 1911. Check it out. It's worth I will definitely check that out. I will look into it. I will definitely look into that, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here, guys. Thank you so much. And Booper Poot Pie says, Molly, March 29th, Scandalous Media, fast forward to 450, watch closely. I will check it out because I love Scandalous Media and the videos that they put out. Love them. I've been a huge fan of theirs forever. But guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this live. I hope you guys, I hope that's been, it will get settled soon that Meghan Markle does not have Diana's gold Cartier watch. Meghan Markle is a pathical, pathological liar who likes to lie about everything and lies and lies all the time. And Rachel says, thank you for the companies, guys. It's great not to be alone. Guys, Rachel, if you ever feel alone, just send me an email. Sometimes it takes me a little bit to reply to my emails or it might go into a spam. Or if you're on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, if you ever feel lonely, throw me a DM, shoot me a DM, and I'll talk to you. No one ever deserves to feel alone. And I'll always respond back, okay? But yeah, I'm just saying. Um, you guys, yeah. I better get going here. I will talk to you guys soon. Maybe I'll make that ring video for later. We'll see how much time I have. But you guys, we all know Meghan Markle is a liar. And a liar, once a liar, always a liar. Let's be honest. Anyways, thanks for tuning in, my friends. Thank you to everyone who sent a super chat or a super sticker. And those who joined the membership, thank you so much. My friends, hit the hit the like button on your way out. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay gorgeous, my beautiful friends. Take care. Bye.